Cyberbullying is a way of bullying someone without using direct contact. It uses technology such as computers or cell phones to bully and harass someone. These are all methods of cyberbullying, whether it's using a cell phone or computer or any type of technology to bully someone. Our group is trying hard to prevent cyberbullying by and against teenagers all across the state of Maine. Megan Meyer was a 13-year-old girl from Missouri who started an online friendship on a social networking site, MySpace, with a person she believed was a new boy in her hometown. In actuality, the friend was a group of individuals, including adults, whose intent was on humiliating the poor girl because of a friendship with another child that had gone wrong. After finding out the truth, Megan then committed suicide after the friendship had terminated. Things like this happen all the time due to cyberbullying. Our group is trying hard to fix this. Many of my friends have been cyberbullied. Cyberbullying is a widespread problem that affects <coughs> teenagers across the country. This problem is becoming more severe as more new technology is being implemented. Teen suicide and teen depression are both effects of cyberbullying. It may not get this <coughs> severe, but it could, so our group would like to try to stop it before it happens. The reason our group chose this topic was because it's a topic us and other teens can relate to. Many teenagers are online during the day. This graph explains why kids cyberbully. The top percent is motivated by revenge, 22%, and said the victim deserved it, 18.7%. The internet is very useful, but it can also be very harmful. It is easier for teenagers to be mean and hurtful online instead of in person, and it creates problem and conflict among other teenagers. Teenagers can relate to this topic. We conducted a survey in Lyman Moore Middle School and it shows that many teenagers are in fact cyberbullied every day. This graph shows the percentage of each grade that have been cyberbullied. That cyberbullied, um, eighth grade is the highest with 24% and fifth grade is the lowest with 16%. Our first alternative policy was to filter profanity in websites like Facebook, MySpace, and AIM. This is very important because if students aren't allowed to type swears to each other, then it will create a more friendly environment. With a more friendly environment, less students will be likely to be cyberbullied, which and also it will be less likely to escalate in teen suicide. The reason we did not choose this as our proposed policy is because even though students would not be allowed to use swears, they would still be able to type other letters and symbols and have the same meaning. The next alternative policy is to have volunteers that would go to schools and talk to students about cyberbullying, what it is, how it's caused, and how you can prevent it. Many students and parents are not aware what cyberbullying is or that it even exists until the issue occurs. <clears throat> this program can help kids learn about who they can go to either at home or at school if they're being cyberbullied. As you can see from this graph, 60% of students who have been cyberbullied have told someone about it, the red section, compared to the 40% who have not, the blue section. But this volunteer program can also give kids the tools they need to cope and deal with cyberbullying by themselves on their own terms. Advantages to this program are that students will become more aware of this rising issue and learn how to take care of it if the issue ever occurs. The reason we did not choose this as a proposed policy is because we might not able to be able to get volunteers to help out. Most people, especially the way the economy is, wouldn't want to use their time for something that they weren't getting paid for. Our last alternative policy is to add cyberbullying into the curriculum of the leadership program. The leadership program is a program that goes around and teaches students about bullying. Unfortunately, they only talk about the, the emotional and physical part of bullying. We know that if cyberbullying was, at, was added into the curriculum, then it would teach students, number one, how to prevent cyberbullying, number two, who they can ask for help, and number three, how to deal with themselves. With these three things, it will be very a lot less likely to also add into teen suicides. The reason we did not choose this as our proposed policy is because the leadership program is not funded or administered by the government. Therefore, it's more of a community action rather than a public policy. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. This statement is definitely false. Many teenagers are hurt by words, and even though telling an adult make the problem better, they feel like they are stitching. Our chosen policy is to have a mandatory government funding class all about cyberbullying and how to deal with it. If this solution does not go against anything stated in the Constitution, like limiting freedom of speech or rights to religion, and it does help to ensure individual safety. The City of Portland should have an education policy in the Portland Public School System to teach students about what cyberbullying is and how they can deal with it. This idea will be funded like any other school program in the City of Portland. Cyberbullying can really hurt a teenager. Guidance teacher from Lyman Moore Middle School states that she spends at least one-fourth of her time dealing with cyberbullying in middle school. 
this program would really teach teenagers that words hurt. We interviewed Lyman Moore Middle School student guidance, guidance counselor, Mrs. Brinkman, Lyman police, student, police officers, and Melanie Trigelski from a counseling center in Maine, and they helped us develop this plan to teach students about online safety. Our steps to complete our proposed policy is first to contact Peter Eggleton, the chairman of the Portland Public School Board. Ways that we would convince Mr. Eggleton would be to present all our information to him and tell why this is the best solution to the cyberbullying problem. <coughs> if he accepted it, then be, he would then present to the school board or have us present it to them. If there was enough support from the school board and they accepted our proposal, it would be then their responsibility to add the class into the curriculum for middle schoolers. The estimated cost of this program is $4,500 a year if it was added into an existing program like him. <coughs> Groups that would support us would be the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, because they are an independent government-funded group that regulates what can be said on the radio and how many swears can be in the movie. They might be interested in teen cleaning up teen conversation as well on the internet. Groups that wouldn't support us would be taxpayers who don't have kids in the foreign public school system because adding a class into the middle school costs money, and more, and more classes means higher taxes. Ways that we could we would convince them would be to write an editorial to the Portland and Press Hill defining the problem and our solution. Putting this in the Portland and Press Hill will make sure lots of people see this article and it's well understood by the public. People like guidance, guidance counselors and teachers will support this solution because because there will lessen the number of kids coming out of class and into the room crying over me if anyone side with them. Side bullying, help. Please help us get rid of this virus that is on our computer. Do you think that lap, your laptops, your Macs, uh, contribute to cyberbullying, or is it before or after school type of thing? Well, the laptops are obviously like a very high educational tool that's used in the schools. As far as the school laptops go, there's not as much on that. It's more cell phones that's a problem, which, because our school doesn't allow cell phones in school, it's not as much in school, even though it does happen. It's mostly outside of school, and it also contributes at school. It cyberbullying happens because it's not face to face, which um, is a big reason why kids do it over cyberspace instead. So it's not as much school laptops; it's more cell phones. And a graph right here says instant messaging is the highest, which is like AIM and Facebook at sixty-seven uh, percent. You're talking a lot about constitutionality. And is this policy that you're proposing constitutional or unconstitutional? Uh, I understand the impact of cyberbullying is so negative. It's just compelling to do something about it. But have you spoken with anyone who says that you're getting dangerously close to flirting with um, trampling on my free speech? Do you have any colleagues or adults, like any fellow students or adults in your in your uh, school that are saying, whoa? Um, well, as far as that goes, the policy that we're choosing is to have a cyberbullying class in schools, which isn't limiting people's freedom of speech. It's just trying to make people more aware of the problem so that they can try to limit how much they talk badly to people online. And it's more about awareness than actually, like, like um, hindering their freedom of and, and um, it doesn't limit their freedom of speech because usually cyberbullying it's not like it's not like I don't like you and just like talking a conversation about it. It's more like harassment, as in they repeatedly make fun of someone or bully someone online because you can't really stop that unless you don't go on. So it, it it's not freedom of speech. It's more harassment. Mm -hmm. And also there are, there's the law you cannot harass someone or like physically hurt them. Well, cyberbullying is something like that, except it's <coughs> more like emotionally hurting than physically. So it's just, um, it's not limiting their freedom of speech. It's, I don't know how to say it. Um, protecting. Yeah, it's like protecting other students. Freedom of speech would more go into the filter one. Um, right. like filtering swears, yeah. but that also contributed to why we didn't choose it as our proposed policy. How did you get the number on how much a class would cost? 
Um, well, um, we got a number from our principal okay. for the prevention of hate violence, and we talked to their, one of their directors that handles all the money, and she said that if there was one employer, and we went to each middle school in Portland, and for one week for each grade, so that'd be nine weeks total, mm -hmm. that it would cost around $4,500. Mm -hmm.